This is the first video on state space observers. So the previous section looked at state feedback. And in other words, it said, how can we determine a feedback control law u equals minus kx so that we get the closed loop behavior that we want? Now, state feedback assumes that the states are known. And if you look here, you'll see it uses state information. It uses x. And therefore, it was assumed that the states were available or could be measured easily. So our next job is to consider how these state values can actually be estimated or observed. So where do we get these state values from? What's an observer then? So an observer is an operator or a system which interprets, and that's a key word, interprets available measurements. So what we want to do is go from measurements to an actual value. So here's an example. I've got an inspector here, and they can see some measurements. They can see some footprints. So what's their job? Their job is to say, given what I can see, what am I able to deduce? So they can't actually see the state x. They can see an alternative measurement. And from that measurement, they want to deduce something about the state. And here's the question. What extra knowledge are they going to use in order to make their deduction. So we'll illustrate this as an example. So first of all, we have to clarify what we mean by available knowledge. So what measurements have we got? We need to know what is the quality of these measurements and how much confidence do I have them? So if you have a low quality measurement, you may not believe in it. You may not want to use it. And critically, what other knowledge can I introduce which is relevant to the measurements? If I've got other knowledge, I can use this with the measurements to create additional knowledge. Now, this latter point is really, really important. Most measurements have got a context. By understanding the context, we're able to interpret the measurement much more reliably. So don't just take a measurement as it's given. Actually say, what's the context that that measurement's come from? And then you will get more information from it. So here's an example um, from an easy one to understand based on muddy footprints. So I can see the muddy footprints. But what I want to do is ask myself, what can I infer from those muddy footprints apart from the fact that they exist? So what extra information can I get? Well, I can infer that someone walked this way since it last rained. Because if it rained, it would have washed the footprints away. I can infer the size of shoe they had on because of the size of the footprint. If the footprints are still damp, then I can infer it's likely they were made recently because otherwise they would have dried. If a limited num number of people are around or go on this particular route, then I can actually shortlist the possible people who made these footprints and so on. So what do you notice? The more context knowledge I have, so context knowledge such as, has it rained? What is a shoe? People wear shoes, etc., etc. So the more context knowledge I have, the more information that I can actually get out of this single measurement. The measurement tells me much more than just there are some footprints. However, what if we have a weak context? What if I don't know what the weather's been like? Then I can't do date stamping, so I can infer less. What if I don't know which people are around or which people normally go this route? Then I can't easily come up with a short list who might have made the footprints. What if the footprints are really rather messy? Then I can't easily determine the shoe size or even the tread pattern. So without strong context knowledge, then my measurement becomes much less valuable. I can no longer make reliable deductions. So I need both good quality measurement and also good quality context knowledge if I want to make that measurement give me a valuable inference. So what's an observer? So an observer is an operator or system which interprets available measurements. And the key question we want to ask now is what knowledge can we use, 
alongside the measurement in order to make the inferences or this interpretation. So state space systems then. First, what measurements can I make? What context knowledge do I have? And can I combine these efficiently and systematically to make reliable deductions? And you remember what I'm actually trying to do is find out what's the state x of t. And so what we're going to say here is you cannot measure x of t directly. You can measure something else. And we want to infer x of t from available measurements. So I happen to know the input. I'm going to assume that I know the system dynamics. So x dot equals ax plus bu y equals cx. And I'm going to assume that I can measure the output. So what we can do here is we can group this in two ways. We can say the input and the system dynamics are the context knowledge which I have and the measurement I have is the output. So I can't measure the state directly but I can measure the system output and the context knowledge I have are the underlying system, system dynamics and the input. So what's the concept of a state observer? Given knowledge of the input knowledge of the measurements of the output and knowledge of the state space model, can I determine the states x of t? For now, we're going to assume that the parameters a, b and c are known exactly and the measurements are good. Now this is an assumption and one of the things you might want to ask yourself is what would happen if you did not know A, B and C reliably, or if the measurements were poor, would you still be able to determine the states X of T? So final thing we want to look at is what can we draw out from this system model? Now typically a human will do a form of back calculation. So they'll say in order to arrive at position P with a given speed and timing, it's likely I went through position M with a related speed and timing. And what we're doing here as a human is we're embedding awareness of system dynamics. So we're saying that there's only certain transitions that are possible. Cars can only go so fast, they can only turn so quickly, they can only stop so quickly, they have to stay on roads. So in other words, a limited forms of transition are feasible. Now why is that important? Because what we do as a human is we postulate different initial conditions and then we say all right let's simulate forward in time with the model dynamics I've got from those initial conditions and find out can I get the output that I've observed and you'll find there's only a limited number of initial conditions which will match what I've observed and so we narrow down the possible initial conditions by making use of the system dynamics. So the key word here is we use our awareness of the underlying system dynamics in order to shortlist. So here's a summary. We've introduced the concept of an observer. An observer combines different forms of knowledge, facts and measurements to make inferences about a system state. So typically <coughs> in a state-based model an observer will combine knowledge of past inputs available measurements of outputs and knowledge of model parameters which implicitly means system dynamics. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at how we can use this information to come up with a mathematical definition of an observer which will give us the system estimates.